Hi, this is Mamaika and you're watching Research Simplified. There are probably just two reasons that you are in this video. First, that is because you really want to learn about qualitative research writing. Or second, that is because you don't have any choice but to write. Now, regardless of your reason, I would like to congratulate you for taking the first step, and that is by watching this video. Now, before we start discussing what research is and all the other topics that we have for today, I would like to cater first to something which I think is very, very important, especially when it comes to writing, and that is how we feel whenever we are asked to do so. A lot of students, a lot of even professionals, a lot of people think that writing is a very boring, very arduous task. And I cannot blame you. By factually speaking, out of the five macro skills that we have to learn as individuals, which are reading, listening, watching, speaking, and writing, people prefer the first three more than the last two. Why is that? Because whenever we are asked to say read, or listen or watch, we are the ones receiving the message. Unlike when we have to write or when we have to speak, we are the ones who are sending the message. Therefore, we have to be very good sources of information for that particular period or for that particular instance. And that is why a lot of people despise the idea of having to speak in front of people and the idea of having to write something. More, more specifically, whenever they are asked to write a research paper, because a research paper is very lengthy, there are a lot of guidelines, a lot of rules that we have to follow. That is why it is okay, and I fully understand if you feel anxious about this, especially if this is your first time, that is completely normal. But frankly and honestly speaking, based on my experience and from what I've seen from other people as well, whom I've encountered for also writing their own research papers. Writing a research paper is actually a very cool thing to do. It is cool in such a way that you get to explore your interests. The key to making the writing process a lot more enjoyable is by choosing the topic that you really want. Something that can retain your attention for that particular period that you are given to write your research paper, say for the entire semester or for a couple of months or even years. Find a topic that you really want to find a solution for. That is how we make the writing process more enjoyable, thrilling, and fun for us as the researchers. Now let's dig deep into what research is. Research is a scientific investigation being conducted to solve existing problems. I think that is the simplest definition that I could give. Whenever we say research, at the foremost, it is scientific. It is empirical. It is based on what we observe from the surroundings. It is factual based. And it is uh, scientific in such a way that it follows a certain process. All right, And then, we do it for the purpose of solving societal problems. There are a lot of existing problems, or sometimes there are a lot of rooms for improvement in different areas or in different fields. We conduct research for the purpose of solving those problems or improving the solutions that we have at the moment. We may also conduct research for the purpose of either proving or disproving or building our own theories. Also, we may do it for observing people and their lives, their culture, their behavior. We may also conduct it for the purpose of finding the correlation between the variables that we have, say finding the calculations if you have to, and also, of course, to solve the problems that we have in the society. From there, I want you to imagine a world without research. Everything in the world is a product of research. Say the gadget that you're using right now, whether you are watching this through your cell phone or your laptop or your tablet or your PC, that is a product of research. The internet is a product of research. The lights that we have, the camera that I'm using right now, even the chairs and tables, all the appliances, everything in the world is a product of observation and research. Having said that, indeed, 
research is a very important, it is a very, very vital part of our humanity. It is through research that we get to explore and improve the different facets that we have in our lives and in our being humans. It is through research that we get to experience all the benefits of its discoveries as well. That is why we really cannot do away with it, whether we like it or not. It helps us in so many ways. And it is just so fun and exciting to be part of that journey, of the journey of the humanity from, from having no knowledge from something towards having complete knowledge about something. Being a researcher gives us that opportunity to participate, to give our share in improving the lives of our generation and the generations to come. Truly, research is very important in such a way that it gives us knowledge. And knowledge is power. Knowledge gives us the ability to not be deceived into believing things which are not true. It gives us the ability to be more factual based in, in giving our opinions or in sharing what we know, in, in taking positions or sides. Because the experience of it makes us believe more in the relevance of evidence-based information. And also, of course, it is very important because it is one of the key avenues for the betterment of our society. Now that we know what research is and why is it important, at this point, let us talk about three terms which are connected to research. These are inquiry, investigation, and immersion. Inquiry, from the word inquire, is simply asking questions. In order for us to find the solution to our chosen problem, we have to come up with the right questions. And so it is through inquiry that we get to find the data that we need for us to find the solutions as well to the problem that we've chosen. Again, inquiry is simply asking questions. The second term is investigation. When we say investigation, it is also inquiring or asking questions, only that in investigation, we get to really examine these questions. And thus, it is also called a systematic inquiry. That is, whenever we ask questions, we also follow a certain system or a certain process in doing so. Again, that is investigation. The third term is immersion. Immersion, from the word immerse, this is when the researcher actively participates or deeply immerses himself or herself in the data gathering procedure. A lot of documentaries, even vloggers do this as well nowadays. That is when instead of just merely observing from afar, the researchers participate in the lives or in the work of the people that they are observing. That is why it is called immersion. And through that, we get to gather information from, from the point of view of our participants. Again, that is immersion. Now, as I have said earlier, these three are very much connected to research in such a way that in order for us to conduct our research, we have to constantly apply these three. We have to constantly ask questions by following a system. And when it comes to immersion, if it is necessary, because not all research papers involve immersion, but if it is necessary, then we also have to perform this in order for us to gather the information that are needed for our topic. That's it for our video. I hope that you've learned even just a little about research, investigation, inquiry, and immersion. Thank you very much and God bless.